Are you ready for the word? Praise him. This is Pastor Pearson of Word of Faith Christian Center here in sunny San Antonio, Texas. A Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church where Jesus Christ is Lord and you'll never be bored. We want to welcome all of you back to our broadcast that I pray is being a blessing to you and yours. So sit back and relax as I bring a message from the Word of God just for you. But please, please, please have an ear to hear what the Lord is about to say. Because if you do, I guarantee you that you're going to be blessed today. So without further ado, let me bring today's message to you. But before I do, I've got a question to ask you. Are you ready for the word? Because ready or not, here it comes. God is powerful, all powerful. He can do all kinds of things he wants to do. But at the same time, he's letting us know clearly, but if you have doubt, I'm not going to do it for you. So we need to get this doubt and unbelief up out of me and you to make sure it ain't in me and you. Now, the last few times we got together, we've been talking about the dangers of doubt and unbelief, the dangers of doubt and unbelief. And we found out doubt and unbelief is dangerous. They are dangerous. It can be able to stop us from receiving manifestation. It can block us from receiving manifestation. We can be in the midst of a manifestation. It can cause us to sink in the middle of the manifestation. It can negate the manifestation that God's already doing. And last time we got together, found out that doubt and unbelief many times can disguise itself because it can, we, we, can, we can cast our, our faith off into the future, but in the present, we don't have the faith. We have doubt and unbelief. But because we know we got faith in the future, we think that we still got faith. But no, do you think, can, can, God, can God do it for you right now? Because a lot of us don't believe that God can do it for us right now. Well, God is a right now God. Praise God. God wants to do some things in your life right now. And so in order for you to do it right now, you got to have faith right now and no doubt and unbelief right now. And, and we saw how Martha and Mary had that. Even though they believed that God could do in the future what he said he would do, they didn't really believe that he could do today what he wanted them to do. But I thank God that we got a God that's smart enough to backdoor us from time to time. He backdoored them, had them do something which would have demonstrated faith, whether it did demonstrated faith, whether they recognized it or not, by rolling the stone away. And then four days later, you know, you know which he was four days from the day that he was put in there. He rolled the stone away, meaning that he eliminated every possibility of it being able to say that it was anything else other than what he had to say. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. And, I, and, and he came forth, too. He lived because they, believe, because they believed enough to do what he told them to do. That's why many times, even though you might not believe like you think you need to, which you should, but at the same time, just do what he tells you to do because that's a demonstration of your belief and he'll still come through for you. Today, we're going to start talking about something else. That's very important. It's going to, in fact, it's going to be very important. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 3, please. Because we've been learning how dangerous doubt and unbelief is. How dangerous doubt and unbelief is. Well, therefore, we need to be able to recognize doubt and unbelief. We need to be able to recognize doubt and unbelief. So for the next few times, we're going to be talking about recognizing doubt and unbelief. Recognizing doubt and unbelief. In fact, for the next few times or the next few times, we're going to be re- talking about recognizing the reasons for doubt and unbelief. Because it's important for you to know what doubt and unbelief is and whether or not it's manifesting in the middle of your life. And it's important for you to understand also the reasons why it can manifest in the middle of your life. Because just like God can backdoor you and get you into faith, Satan can backdoor you and get you into doubt and unbelief and you don't even know that he's doing it. Because the Bible says he's more subtle than any of the beasts of the field. The word subtle means non-obvious, which means it won't be obvious that he's doing what he do, but he'll still do what he do to you. Is anybody hearing me up in here? Pickpocket ain't obvious. He can bump into you and say, oh, excuse me, and walk away with your wallet on that given day. Are you listening to me up in here? They can shake your hand and smile at you too, give you a big old hug and walk away with your ring and your watch too. And you didn't even notice what happened to you. And the devil is a thief. I say he's a thief. And he'll rip you off of the opportunity to step into what God has in store for you by implanting some doubt and unbelief in you and causing you to even not even notice that he did what he do. Well, you're going to be able to recognize it. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to be able to know it. Mm -hmm. He's going to make sure that you know it because God's going to show it. That's if you got an ear to hear what the Lord's going to say to you. If you got an ear to hear. Hebrews chapter 3. Start reading verse 7. Let's look at the importance of this. Why is this so important? Glad you asked. We're picking up in verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 3. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if ye will hear my voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the days of temptation in the wilderness, when your daddies tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. 
Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. Now, that's, <laughs> that's serious right there. He said, I swear in my wrath that you ain't entering in. But then he makes an awesome statement behind that in verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now, Holy Ghost said that. Praise God. Holy Ghost said that. Third person of the Godhead, the one that's actively involved in this world at this present time. And he's telling us what we need to know and we, what we need to understand at this time. And that's that God was grieved with them, them folk that operated in unbelief before. He was grieved with them and told them, you is not walking through this open door. That's deep. God opened a door for them, but at the same time, he said, you ain't opening it. You ain't going through it. Why? Because of your doubt and unbelief. He was grieved with them. That word grieved right there means vexed, as with something irksome. It was vexed as with something irksome. It means to feel indignation at. He was grieved. They irked him. Eastside Troy said, got on his last nerves. Not that he got a last nerve, but that's the, but that's the you know that's the mindset we can understand about that. Anybody ever irked you, bothered you, just something they said or something they, they did, just like Ugh. it just Ugh. it just it just irritate you. That's what they God said that they did. That's why He's telling us what they did, so we don't do what they did, so the, He don't do what He did to them, to us too. We don't want to irk God. We don't want to vex God. We don't want him feeling indignation at me and you. Especially when he's trying to come through for me and you. He wants to give a manifestation to me and you. He want to set us out. He want to hook us up. He want to bless us beyond our wildest comprehension. But there's things we can do that can irk God even when he's trying to come through for me and you. Look at your neighbor and say, you better pay attention, baby, because this is serious. It's it's serious right here. It's serious. Because he can feel indignation at us. The word indignation means feeling characterized by or expressing strong displeasure at something considered unjust, offensive, insulting, or base. Where God, where it says indignation is feeling characterized by or expressing strong displeasure. You mean God can have strong displeasure? Mm hmm. At something considered unjust offensive insulting or base where God says I felt grieved at them I was strongly displeased with them because they did something that in my mind was unjust something that was offensive something that was insulting and something that was based (laughs) verse 11 So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. God swore in his wrath. That word swear right there means to take and take or declare an oath. To take or declare an oath. God said, I declare an oath you ain't getting in. Can you imagine God said, I swear you ain't getting in. Come on, stay with me now. Can you imagine God looking at you and be like, I swear you ain't getting in. You know, he had to put his hand on himself because he had to put his hand on the Bible. He put his hand on himself. <laughs> and he raised up his hand and said, I swear you. He like, look, yo, look at me. Look at me. I swear you ain't getting in. Everybody say, dying. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope that will never be you. He said he swore in his wrath they wasn't getting in. He just swear. He swore in his wrath they wasn't getting in. And when he says he swore in his wrath, that word wrath means violent passion. Violent passion. He didn't just say, I swear you ain't getting in. He said, I swear you ain't getting in. He did it with passion, with violent passion. Like, dang. I bet you when he said it, their hair went back. And it was like, it was, <laughs> it's like it singed all in the front and stuff. See, God swore with a violent passion that they would not receive the manifestation of the promised land that he promised them. He swore with a violent passion. But then in verse 12, God then warns the readers of the scriptures today to not let the same thing happen to them the same way. He warns them so that the same thing don't happen to them. He told them in verse 12, 
Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Take heed that there would not be in you an evil heart of unbelief. Notice he called it an evil heart. But he said, I need you to take heed. That word take heed right there means to look at. As in take a long, hard look at. To look at. As in take a long, hard look at. God is saying that we ought to take a long, hard look at whether doubt and unbelief is in me and you. We ought to take a long, hard look at the whether doubt and unbelief is in me and you. Why is that? Because you're going to deal with a, a lot of long, hard days and a lot of long, hard nights. A lot of long, hard situations where it ain't going to turn out right if you still got doubt and unbelief on the inside of you. So you ought to take a long, hard look. Not a long, casual look. A long, hard look. Come on up in here. God says that we ought to take a long, hard look at whether doubt and unbelief is in me and you. A long, hard look to make sure that it's not me and you. Where you look, then you look, then you look again. Then you look, then you look, and then you look again. And then a few weeks later, you look, then you look, then you look again. Well, that's a lot of trouble. It ain't no more trouble than it is than you're going to be experiencing if you got it in you. Not when he done put his hand up and said, I swear you ain't getting in. Especially since he swore with a violent passion that we wasn't going to receive the manifestation that he promised us. If doubt and unbelief is in us. Because look what it causes us to do. Departing from the living God. It'll cause you to depart from the living God. That word departing right there means to remove. That is to instigate a revolt. It means to remove. That is to instigate a revolt, which means if doubt and unbelief is on the inside of you, you will instigate, that, that doubt and unbelief will instigate a revolt from God. It'll instigate a revolt. Because remember, doubt and unbelief is of the devil. Who's it from? And remember, what it, what's the devil notorious for doing up in heaven? Revolting against God. And so anything he places on the inside of you is going to cause you to revolt on it against God the same way too. Well, God's trying to bless you, but you're revolting against him. God's trying to hook you up, but you're removing yourself from it. God's trying to set you out, but you, you're pulling yourself out of it. And you're like, no, you knew a revolt against him being a blessing to you. Somebody say, ain't nobody that stupid. Mm, that's why Satan will give you the spirit of stupid so that you can then be able to do something that stupid. Are you listening to me up in here? That's why God said, I need you to pay close attention to this. I need you to take heed to this. Now, if any time God says in Scripture, take heed to something, you ought to put circles around it, stars around it, get you a, 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 a illuminating um, highlighter and, and, and put it around it, praise God. Hallelujah. So in case you turn the lights off in your bedroom, it still light up, praise God, so it can show you, look at this over here. Because he's telling you something that you really need to hear. He said, I need you to pay attention. Otherwise, you'll be done revolted from me. Reflexively, reflexively means to desist or desert. To desist or desert. Which means you will desist doing what you're supposed to do. That will cause him to be able to come through for you. That will open the door for him to do, come through for you. You'll desist doing it. And you'll desert God. God's trying to hook you up, but you desert him. Leave him. See, doubt and unbelief, if left within us, will cause us to remove ourselves from the opportunity to receive and achieve what God has for us. We'll remove ourselves from it. It'll cause us to instigate a revolt against the same God who wants to bless us as well as use us. He's trying to use us. He's trying to bless us, but we'll revolt against him. It'll cause us to cease and desist from anything that God may have had for us to do to be able to receive the manifestation of what he has had for me and you. It'll cause us to cease and desist. It'll cause us to desert and leave our manifestation behind and not receive it at any time. It'll cause us to desert. So that, verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end or keep having faith until the end. We're to be partakers. That word partakers means participants. So we're going to be participants if, if you know, it's the fine print in the contract. It's, it's the conditional part of it. 
if makes his participation conditional. If we don't have unbelief on the inside of me and you, if we don't have this doubt on the inside of me and you, then we can have what God has in store for me and you. Well, that means we ought to take a good hard look and make sure that doubt and unbelief is not in me and you. Not for a day, not for a minute, not for a second. We ought to make sure doubt and unbelief is not on the inside of me and you. And if we find it, we ought to do everything we need to do. Get rid of it real quick. Because otherwise, it'll do what it's designed to do. And that's to cause you to not receive what God has in store for you. Or at least that's what God thinks. You know, I don't know. I, I kind of like lean with what he thinks. If he thinks that's what we ought to do, that's what we ought to do. If you think it's too much, think it's too much. I'm going to do what he said do. I ain't going to put lip service to what he said. I'm going to put the pedal to the metal and I'm going to do everything he said do. That's at least me. I don't know about you. See, doubt and unbelief can show itself in numerous different ways. And it can come because of numerous different reasons. It can show itself in numerous different ways. And it can show itself in because of numerous different reasons. Because it's, it's, it, it, can, it can show itself in one way. You don't even know that's what you said. It can show itself in one way. You don't even know that's what you really did. But you demonstrated doubt and unbelief. It can be able to operate in different ways where you, you are operating in it and don't even know it. Why? Because you done trained yourself to say the right words, Polly Wanna Cracker. You done trained yourself to be able to say the right words like Maslow's dog. Hallelujah. Whereas, whereas you know to be able to say the right thing, but you're still living and doing the opposite of what faith is. But won't even see it because he's more subtle than any of the beasts of field. But I love the Lord. He is our light and our salvation. He's our light. He'll boom, show a, bright, a big bright light down on your situation according to the word of God. So you can see it for yourself. you would be like, dang, I didn't even know that was there. He said, well, good. Now get it up out of there. Amen. Dang, I didn't even know I was doing that. Because most folk talk faith, but live doubt and unbelief. More folk talk faith. See, we trained. We are well trained around. And it's a good church too, praise God. In fact, it's an excellent church, praise God. And it's a well trained church. Y'all, if I started a sentence, you'd finish it. If I started a statement, you can be able to complete it, praise God. But would you live it? That's a whole nother world. That's a whole nother world. Because folk know the right answers. Mm-hmm. We know how to be, we, we can quote the right things. But do we do it? That's what we need to talk about. See, it's important to be able to recognize the reasons for doubt and unbelief so that we can eliminate doubt and unbelief at the source. Because if this causes doubt, I'm not going to have nothing to do with it. If this entertains the opportunity for me to have doubt and unbelief, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. That's just me. I'm the kind of person that if I find out it causes a problem, I don't want to have nothing to do with it in the first place. Hallelujah. That's one of the reasons why God had to put the love of God so deep in me and put it in so in, in such, you know, overflowing in me. He had to shed it abroad in my heart, just like he did you. He shed it about, he gushed it in my heart because I'm a person that don't deal with problems. And so if I, if I had not had this kind of love on the inside of me, the moment I recognized you as a problem, that'd be the last time I dealt with you. I'd have wrote you off so quick you wouldn't even have known you existed. I'm a man on top of it, praise God. And men are given by God ability to compartmentalize thought. We, can, we got a bunch of doors inside of our head you don't even see. And we can take a thought, a hurtful thought. We can take a, diff, a difficult thought and we can stick it off into that a compartment, close the door, lock it, and it'll never be opened up again. We'll treat you like we never met you. You'd be like, why are you so cold? It's because I got, I don't compartmentalize that. I can, I put it over here someplace. So because of that, I just see you from that point on. I can even smile and hate you. Because <laughs> the man can do that. Praise God. Ladies can't. You just see people, you roll your eyes at them as soon as you see them. You go into asthma attack as soon as you see them. <laughs> Unless you real, 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 real street. Because the street trains you how to be able to, hey man, we don't need to get in all that. I'm putting a light on too many of y'all right now. That's why you're getting quiet on it, brother. Praise God. So let's start off with a few definitions. Praise God, this will be helpful. Let's start off with a few definitions. First, I'm going to start working with the word doubt. Let's do definitions of doubt. 
The word doubt, multiple definitions. First one is to be uncertain about, consider questionable or unlikely, hesitate to believe. The baby said amen. It means to be uncertain about, consider questionable or unlikely, hesitate to believe. Which means that once we hesitate to believe, the hesitation all by itself shows that doubt and unbelief is in manifestation. I said the hesitation in itself shows you that doubt and unbelief. Because see, God designed things to flow. Watch water. It's designed by God. It just flows. If it hesitates, something's blocking it. Something's blocking it. It was designed to just flow. Air was designed to flow. Everything was designed to flow. Anytime hesitation comes, it's because something's blocking it. And if you hesitate believing, if you hesitate, if you just hesitate, it's because something's in there blocking it. There's a thought in there that ought not be there that's causing you to be able to hesitate to believe. Because it's supposed to be the easiest thing in the world for us to believe God. Let me get this right. He ain't ever lied. Let me get this right. He right all the time. Let me get this right. Heaven and earth would pass away before a dot or a a jot or a tittle of what he said doesn't turn out to be what he said. If you can't believe somebody like that, who can you believe? And we all say that because we Christians. Mm -hmm. Not a jot nor a tittle. I took VBBS. I know a jot, what a jot is, I know what a tittle is. Then why do you have faith that's so little? Why do you hesitate when God say do what he said do? Why do you hesitate when God said go ahead and make this move? Why do you hesitate when God said this is the life I want you to live? Why do you hesitate? Because you in doubt. You doubt God. Everybody say there's a solution for this. Tell your neighbor, quit getting quiet. There's a solution for this. Or we're uncertain about. We're uncertain about. See, faith is absolute assurance, absolute confidence, absolute reliance in what God said to you. But if you are not absolutely sure of what God said to you, if you have any kind of uncertainty in you about whether or not this is going to happen for you, you're in doubt. You're in doubt. And so therefore, you're going to be left out when it comes time for manifestation. You think you're just holding on, waiting on God. God said, no, actually, I'm waiting on you to believe what I said to you. Because it don't take God long to do what God do. What take him long is to get me and you in the faith and get this doubt and unbelief on the inside of you. And one of the reasons why it takes so long is because we don't do what he tell us to do and take heed like he tell us to do. But we be walking around being duped and fooled and thinking that thing is cool. Thinking we got it going on. Oh, I got it together. I praise God. I done graduated from VBBS, man. I'm on my way to get out of here. And they ain't praise God. I've been in this church since Babcock and Fecca. I even go back all the way to Southfield with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I know I'm in faith. Really? To be uncertain about. To even consider questionable or unlikely. To hesitate to believe. That's just one of the definitions of doubt. Let's go to another one. It means, I I took so much air out the room. Let me take some more out the room. Praise God. It also means to be apprehensive about. To be apprehensive about. See, God wants his children to be, to apprehend, not to be apprehensive. He wants us to apprehend, which means to receive. Not to be apprehensive. See, a lot of us are apprehensive about what God says. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that. We're apprehensive. Hey, come on, do this. I, <laughs> I don't know about that. See, God desires his children to know with certainty, not to live with uncertainty. He never designed us to live with uncertainty. He designed us to live with certainty. So that's, why, that's why he pounced on the female Eve, the female Adam. Because he found out she was uncertain about what God said about the fruit. She was uncertain about it. He said, oh, see, that's like sick him to a dog. I got you because you don't know this thing. 
Why? Because I see room to wiggle. I see room to make my move. I see room to do what I do because you're not certain about what God said to you. Because if you were certain about what God said to you, you wouldn't budge, you wouldn't move, you wouldn't hesitate. You would lock in on what God said and that would be all that it would be. But a lot of us are, are apprehensive about it. See, God's word is supposed to replace all unlikeness, unlikeliness with definiteness. It's supposed to replace all unlikeliness with definiteness. In such a way, we're not supposed to look at things as unlikely. We're supposed to look at things as definitely. That once God said it, it's definite. Because God ain't ever lied. And if he said it, then that's the way it's going to be. So on that, I can rely. I can know it's going to happen. I can know know like I know like I know. We even know to say that phrase. But we, we, we can say, oh, I know like I know like I know like I know God got me. Then why did an alarm hit you when you open up that bill? Why it hit you when the doctor told you what he saw? Why you started planning your home going service and who going to take care of the kids and who going to take care of the grandkids and where all them plans come from? Amen. See, God's word is supposed to replace all unlikeliness with definiteness. We're supposed to be definite. It's supposed to end all the uncertainty and replace it with certainty. We're supposed to be the most certain people in the world. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We're supposed to be certain. Because God said it. So we're certain about it. Himself became poor so that I could become rich. Well, he already did his part. Well, then I, I, I claim richness in Jesus' name, and that's all I'm. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say. I ain't saying nothing else because I stay in agreement with God every day. That's what we're supposed to do. That I'm healed. Doctor said, "I saw this. I'm healed." He said, "Well, look, I'm certain about what I saw, and I'm certain about what I read. Absolutely certain about it. That there's no doubt." In my mind, that God's going to do what he said at this time. I'm, can I put a pause button here? God's raising up a people that believe for real. He about to get rid of all this, all this fakeness. And he about to cause us to enter into faith. He about to replace fake with faith. Well, that's all that we have time for today. We trust that you were blessed by what the word of God had to say. Call a neighbor, call a friend, tell them to tune in. But when you do, know that we're going to ask the same question of you. That is, are you ready for the word? Y'all stay blessed.